Update 2022.5 has just been released and it features lots of big new UI and UX changes and it also features a whole host of new automation improvements and enhancements. So let's get straight into this and have a look at the five features that I really like. Let's kick this off then with the first and most obvious one, the UI changes. Personally, I'm a big fan of the new UI changes. I think Mateus and the team have done a great job here restructuring and reordering all of those menus. Everything is definitely now more logical and you can actually find things where you'd expect them to be. But it's not all plain sailing. There's definitely some pros and cons here of the new UI. The pros being that it's much simpler now for a new user to just pick Home Assistant up and find things because the categories and organization of the menus just make sense. And the cons being, if you're a long time Home Assistant user, you're gonna have to readapt and relearn all that muscle memory for where the menus and items are. Also, as a content creator, any video that I've created prior to this one is gonna be slightly out of date just as things are in different places. So if you're following along with any YouTube tutorial, then they're just gonna be out of date. And if you do happen to view a tutorial where the menus and items are now out of date because of the new UI changes, then be that person that says, hey, this thing is now located here. And then your comment can be pinned and it will just help anybody else out. The configuration menu is now no more. So no longer will I be saying head into your configuration menu. This has been swapped with what's now called settings, which again kind of makes sense because that little gear icon that we all know and love is what you'd actually associate with the term settings. And it's where you go to actually do all of your Home Assistant settings and configurations. And the rename and rebrand of the configuration menu is just scratching the surface with these new UI changes. The big guts and the main features and changes of this come into place when you're having a look at the supervisor menu and also the old settings menu. All of this reorganizing and restructuring have given us a brand new menu called the system menu. Underneath the system menu, you'll find some submenu items for various different parts of Home Assistant. And the majority of these have come from the broken down supervisor menu. And doing this has given us lots of new logical sections. And it's now even easier to find things like network information, system health, backups, logs, updates, and much, much more. There are lots of new UI changes in this update. And while it does make some of them easier to find and easier to access, if you're a long time Home Assistant user, it may also do the opposite and make it harder to find things for you just because you're not used to these new sections and the new layout. And rather than just running through all the new features and restructuring of the UI, I'm just going to touch on the points where it was sections and items that I couldn't find after updating to 2022.5, just in case they help you out. And if you are interested, I will be covering all of the new UI changes in a future video where I'll just run through all the changes and just show you where everything is now. The first one that I looked for and instantly couldn't find was the validation checker. So previously we'd head into the configuration menu and then into settings. And then here we'd have this big blue button that we could click to check that our config was valid, but that no longer exists. So how do we do that now? In the UI, we now need to head into the developer tools. And at the top bar, you'll now notice a new section in there called YAML. Underneath this section, you'll find all of the previous configuration options and also the various reloads for all of the different parts of Home Assistant. So that stuff is still all there and it still works as it previously did. There's now no longer a big blue button for the check configuration, but there's still a little link that you can press to do the same action. And it's also worth noting here that to actually be able to view these things, you do need to have advanced mode turned on in your Home Assistant profile. Another thing that I couldn't find in the new UI was the host hardware information. And this was just more of an oversight by me. So in the new UI, you head into the hardware information and you need to click the overflow menu in the top right corner. And once you do this, you'll be able to view that host information. I'm not sure if in the future things are going to move out of that overflow menu into various different sections, but it would be nice to see. So those are just a couple of things that I couldn't find whilst using the new UI. If there's things that you can't find, or maybe there's things that you're not sure if they exist anymore, then let me know in the comments below. And when I create that UI video, I'll be sure to pick up your comments and include them. And while we're on the topic of the UI, here's something that I like and that I don't like. The first thing that I like is a very small feature and it's the ability to now just restart directly from the settings menu. So if you open up the settings menu in the new UI, in the top right corner, you'll see an option to restart Home Assistant. And if you click this, this is gonna just quickly restart Home Assistant. And this is just a Home Assistant restart and not a full host reboot. And if you're familiar with the configuration menu restart, then it's that exact same restart. Moving on then to the thing that I don't like, and it's the new magnifying glass that appears on the top of the dashboard. So this is gonna be on any of your dashboard pages when they're a certain size. Moving on to feature two then, we've got the if then action. 
This is a new action type that aims to keep automation structures simple, compact and clean. You could already perform the basis of an if statement by making use of conditionals and choose actions, but this new action is more accessible as it's more readable. I think that this action type is going to be great for new users, especially if they're moving away from other automation platforms, things like if this then that, smart things and also Akara. And while this is a very basic programming concept and it's something that you could already do in Home Assistant, it's definitely going to be easier for new users and it's definitely way more readable. And as I previously mentioned, the syntax of this action or the way that it's written is very easy to understand. It's broken down into two main parts. You've got the if section and the then section. And there's actually a great example of this on the Home Assistant webpage. In the Home Assistant example here, you can see the two main sections. You've got the if and then the then. This particular example is a script. And what happens here is that if no one is home, then the vacuum cleaner starts. You'll also notice at the end of that example, there's an else part. And this else part is an optional section, so you can just have the if and then then, but optionally you can add an else. The if then statement does also support nested statements, but if you find yourself creating lots of different nested statements, then you might be better off checking out the choose action, as it's a little bit more flexible. I'm yet to make use of the if then action within my own automations, but I am going to be updating a whole bunch of them to make use of some of the new improvements and features in the update, and also to make use of that small if then syntax. Moving on then, we've got what's probably my favourite big feature of the update, and it's the ability to disable any trigger, condition, or action. This feature does exactly what it says on the tin, and it allows you to disable any trigger, condition, or action, all directly through the UI. To disable one of them, you simply just click the three dots on the relevant section. You'll then see a new option to disable, and if you press this, you'll get a clear visual grey banner that appears on the top of the section, letting you know that it's been disabled. While it's disabled, if an automation that contains it tries to run, it will just simply skip over it. And if you wanted to re-enable it, you just simply click those three dots again and choose Enable. If you write your automations using YAML, then you can also set an enabled flag, or optionally, you can just comment out that whole section. The reason that I love this feature so much is just because it's going to be a huge time saver. Rather than having to delete and re-add various different parts of your automation, you can now just toggle it on and off using the automation editor. Carrying on with my fourth feature, we've got Persons in Zones. In the last update, we got a new attribute added to zones that tells us how many people are inside of a set zone. But in this new update, we can now actually get a list of all of the people that are in a set zone. You access the list of people that are in a zone by making use of the person's attribute within the zone. This one can make creating automations for things like sending notifications to people in set zones much, much easier as you don't need to check every person's location and you can just target that individual person's attribute. Wrapping this up then with my final feature and we've got another big one and it's parallelization. If you didn't know, actions within Home Assistant are sequential and what this means is they run in a sequence. So one will run and when that one finishes, the next one will run and so on and so forth. We now have a new action type called run in parallel and what this allows the action to do is it allows it to run alongside other actions regardless of whether the action has finished or not. If you run an automation with parallel actions you can kind of think of it as each of the actions running side by side as opposed for waiting for the previous action to finish before it kicks off the next one. Realistically what is happening is they're not all running side by side and they all just start and depending on the length of the automation or whatever service or time in it each one needs will determine when it finishes. Running actions in parallel is more of an advanced feature and it's not suitable for absolutely all action types. It's best suited for things where you're not worried about the order that actions come out in. For example, if you're sending out notifications to multiple phones, you might wanna run that with a parallel action. That way all of the notifications are gonna send out but you're not necessarily worried about which phone it actually ends up on first. And while all of this seems great, there are some caveats to be aware of, mainly that there's no order guaranteed. So when things happen, they're not necessarily gonna happen in an order that you might expect. The third parallel action might finish before the first one. It all depends on what it is you're running and you won't really know until runtime. There is a lot more to parallel running, but if you are interested in it, I'll leave a link to Home Assistant's documentation on it. But also I'd recommend checking out some programming documentation on parallel running. And there we go guys, that's been a quick look at five of the new features that I really like in this update. This update has had a big focus on lots of new automation improvements and enhancements, but there are still plenty of other new features and improvements in this update. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite feature was, and also let me know what you think of the new UI changes. If you have enjoyed this video then don't forget to drop me a like, and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong that notification bell. 
you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. And as always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. If you're after some help or a bit of an overview of the new Home Assistant UI, then check out this video that I created. Or if you want to see some of the other Home Assistant things that I've done, then check out these ones. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.